It's important to understand the gain stage of the master fader. And what I mean by gain stage is how much signal flows into it, how much processing you add inside of the master fader, and finally how much signal comes out of the master fader, which controls not only how much signal is coming out of your speakers, but also, and more importantly for mastering, how much volume gets applied to the audio mix down and therefore becomes part of the MP3 or the audio CD. Now, one of the easiest mistakes to make on the master fader is sending too much signal into it. And it's so easy to do because you won't hear the distortion going into it if you're working in 32-bit because the dynamic range at 32-bit is so wide that you won't hear any clipping. However, it will make it really difficult to control how the mastering plugins work. So how do we figure out how much signal is going into the master fader and therefore into the mastering plugins. Well, we use the VU meter that's part of the master fader. And there are two different ways to monitor that meter. I'm going to go ahead and press play on this project so that we can see some signal going into the fader. Okay, now I have some signal going through that master meter. Now, as far as the meters across Cubase go, there are controls for whether you're monitoring the fader's input or the fader's output. And so if you control click on the master fader, or any other fader for that matter, you can scroll down and look at the global meter settings. Almost all the time that you're working inside of Cubase, you're going to be looking at the meter post panner. And what that means is that the, the meter is going to follow the position of the panner or represent the position of the panner. So that's true of any Cubase track and also the master meter. But if we were to change that setting from the post panner to meter input instead, now the VU meters are going to show us how much signal is flowing into the fader. So I'm going to select meter input and I'm going to press play again. Now what I'm looking at on the meter is how much signal is flowing into the master fader. And you'll notice right now I've got a whole ton of signal going in there. In fact, I've already gone over 5 dB over zero and that's just too much. So what I'd like to do is actually change how much signal is going into the master fader. And one way to do that would be to go through the entire project and turn every fader down. But that's not a realistic possibility. Instead, what I'm going to use is the fader input gain control to change how much signal is flowing into the fader. So I'm going to look at this number. Again, that's the peak value of the master meter. And I'm going to take note of how loud it gets through the the loudest portion of the song. Right now it's at 5 dB over zero, so I'm going to need to change that. It also has told me that I'm clipping the output, so the clip light is on. So how do we change how much signal is going into the fader? Well, the easiest way is to click on the E button, and then right above the fader is another volume knob, and this is the input gain control. And you'll notice that it says use shift at the end of that little note. And that's because if you want to move that little knob, you can hold the shift button and then push your mouse up and down to change the value. However, we're not going to use that method. We're just going to type the value that we want into that gain knob right here. So I happen to know that on this particular Cubase project, the loudest part of this project is in the drum solo. Who to thunk, right? So I'm going to locate to that particular part of the song and press play. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the master fader and the value, the peak value of the master meter, and that will tell me how much signal I'm sending into the master fader. And I'm playing through the loudest part of the project, which is this drum solo. So uh, right now we're at about 9 dB below, I'm sorry, 9 dB above zero. So what's going to happen is this sending that much signal into the master fader is going to make the mastering plugins harder to control. So let's bring the input level of the master meter down a bit. So I'm going to go back to that edit button and I'm going to type in, uh, let's see, if we went 9 dB above zero, let's put in minus 9.3.
That will bring the master fader's input down a bit so that we have it at a more manageable level. But now here's a confusing thing. I'm going to go ahead and close that window. I'm going to rewind to the loudest part of the song again. I'm going to click on the clip light and get rid of it. And I'm going to play through that section again. And this is what's confusing, is that all of a sudden the clip light comes on and I've got positive values in that meter again. When you've got the global meter setting assigned to the input, it's always going to be monitoring how much signal is coming into the master fader in front of that gain control. So now what we should do is switch the global meter settings from meter input back to meter post panner. And let's play through that drum solo, that really loud drum solo, one more time. Now you'll notice that my master fader is set to zero right now, and the meter is showing me how much signal is coming out of Cubase. That meter level has gone to minus 0.2 now, whereas before it was going over. We'll just let it play all the way through, and you'll notice that we never go over zero. So now that I have my master fader set at zero and I have a proper amount of input gain assigned to the fader by using this little input gain control, I now have a much, much more manageable and appropriate gain stage. And now let's talk about the possibility of mastering your mix during the recording process.